Welcome to my new segment from the mind of Dr. Jerry Fishkin. This has been an incredible week for me, and I'm filled with gratitude and joy, and I want to share that with you. On Monday, it was announced that my book, The Science of Shame and Its Treatment, won the prestigious Eric Hoffer Award as the 2017 Best Self-Help Book of the Year. Ah, this major accomplishment has special meaning for me, and I want to tell you why. During my third year of college, Eric Hoffer's seminal work, The True Believer, was required reading in advanced social psychology. And up to that point, my psychology curriculum and emphasis was hardcore empiricism, the scientific method. And then there was Eric Hoffer. His insights into the human condition and his inimitable way of expressing his thoughts excited me and has continued to influence my thinking about individuals and their motivations. I wanted to know more about who this man was and how he came to develop his ideas regarding individual motivations for joining mass movements. So who was this man, Eric Hoffer? Eric was born uh, in the Bronx, New York, in 1898, where I was born, but not in 1898. His parents were immigrants from Imperial Germany, and the only language spoken at home was German. By age five, Hoffer could read in both English and his parents' native German. And when he was five years of age, his mother fell down a flight of stairs with him in her arms, and his mother died two years after the fall. By age seven, possibly because of that fall, he lost his eyesight and also his memory. When he was 15 years old, his eyesight inexplicably returned. Fearing that he might lose his eyesight again, he seized on the opportunity to read as much as he could. He stated that when his eyesight came back, he was filled with an enormous hunger for the printed word. He said, quote, I read indiscriminately everything within reach, both English and German, and he never abandoned his reading habits. His father died when he was a young man. With $300 of insurance money from his father's death, he took a bus to Los Angeles and spent the next 10 years living on Skid Row, reading occasionally, writing, and working at odd jobs. Hoffer tried to enlist in the U.S. Army at age 40 during World War II, but he was rejected because of a hernia. Instead, he began working as a longshoreman in the docks of San Francisco. In 1943, becoming a member of the Longshoremen's and Warehousemen's Union, and he was writing between these assignments. So he did that work just so he could write. Eric Hoffer's first book, The True Believer, was published in 1951, and he continued working as a longshoreman and professional writer philosopher until leaving the docks in 1967. Also, in 1967, he was given a tour of the White House by President Lyndon Johnson, who had invited him after seeing the longshoreman on a television program. The following year, President Johnson appointed Eric Coffer to a presidential commission to explore violence and protest, which was a bit about what his true believer was about. In 1970, Eric Hoffer withdrew from public life saying, quote, I'm going to crawl back into my hole where I started, period. I don't want to be a public person or anybody's spokesman, period. I'm not the type for it and I dislike it, period. I'm getting off the train, period, end of quote. What a guy. He said of his decision to withdraw, quote, any man could ride a train, but only a wise man knows when to get off, end of quote. In 1983, President Ronald Reagan honored Eric Coffer by awarding him the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the nation's highest civilian award. On May 21st, 1983, Eric Coffer died in San Francisco. He never married. Throughout his life, Hoffer never abandoned his working class roots and remained working class in his habits, associations, and environment. His book, The True Believer, was a study on the nature of mass movements and the types of individuals who joined them. In it, he stated that the reasons that the inferior elements of a nation can exert 
a marked influence on its course is that uh, they are wholly without reverence toward the present. He stated that these individuals see their lives and the present as spoiled beyond remedy and that they are ready to waste and wreck both. Hence, their recklessness and their will to chaos and anarchy. He stated that the people that join mass movements crave to dissolve their spoiled, meaningless selves in some soul-stirring, spectacular communal undertaking. Hence, their proclivity for united action. In that regard, he wrote that the disaffected are found in all walks of life, but are most frequent in the following categories. The poor, misfits, outcasts, minorities, adolescent youth, the ambitious, those in the grip of some vice or obsession, the impotent in body and mind, the inordinately selfish, the bored, and sinners. How interesting that this book written in 1951 has incredible relevance today with regard to violent, the violence we see perpetrated by radicals and extremists around the world today. Eric Hoffer believed, as I do, that, quote, children are the keys to paradise, end quote. However, when one's child is fraught with and punctuated by trauma, violence, neglect, emotional and physical abandonment, the child's psychological and social development self-knowledge is seriously interrupted, impaired, setting the stage for addictions, emotional and personality disorders. With regard to compassion, Eric Hoffer stated that compassion stands apart from the continuous traffic between good and evil proceedings within us. It is my view that when toxic self-talk and critical self-judgments, which Hoffer referred to as evil proceedings within us, are reduced or eliminated, the components of compassion, that is, attunement and empathy, both for self and others, can flow and compassion can flourish. And regarding its curative effects, Eric Hoffer said, and I quote, compassion is the antitoxin of the soul. Where there is compassion, even the most poison impulses remain relatively harmless. I will talk more about the nature of compassion in an upcoming episode of Psyched. So in the end, it was Eric Hoffer's belief that America meant freedom. And what is freedom? But the capacity to feel like oneself. It has been my professional journey to understand what oneself means and to treat the issues that block one from true self-knowledge and self-expression. It is with great pride that I accept this award and know that for time and all eternity, my name will be associated with Eric Hoffer's. I want to thank the Eric Hoffer Foundation for bestowing this great honor upon me. And I want to thank you. Thank you for listening. And I look forward to hearing from you and wish each of you all my best. And I will see you on the next episode of Psyched here on TherapyCable.com.